restoring rust spores. So after you have collected rust, one thing that you could do is store it for a longer period of time or go ahead and, and inoculate it. What I'm going to talk about right now is storing the rust for future analysis. The first way is for the purpose of short-term storage for just a few weeks. And the second way is longer-term storage. Now for short-term storage, a simple thing that you can do is simply take some plants that have been infected with rust. And so here is a cutting of a couple of stems that have been infected with stem rust. They've been placed on this table for a few days to allow the plants to dry. Once the plants have dried, you can simply take the stems and place them in an envelope. And then place this envelope into a refrigerator or a freezer. Now storing dried plant tissue that has been infected with rust in a refrigerator or a freezer produces viable spores for several weeks. So I just discussed the short-term storage of rust spores. Now I'm going to talk about the long-term storage of rust spores. Now what I mean by long-term storage is storage of rust for years or even decades. Now two important points to remember about long-term storage are that first, you need to keep the spores dry and you also need to keep the spores cold. In order to keep the spores dry, what we do at the Serial Disease Laboratory is we take spores and place them in a desiccator. And so we collected these dry spores into these two capsules here. If you take the capsules, place them in an envelope, and place inside a desiccator for three to five days, and that will be sufficient in order to dry out the spores. Now what I mean by a desiccator is simply an airtight chamber that has a desiccant inside that will be drying out the environment inside. And so in this case, this is a metal box that is airtight and has a desiccant that is anhydrous calcium sulfate. And so the anhydrous calcium sulfate is absorbing all the water that's inside this airtight chamber. This will allow the capsules with the spores inside to be dried out. Now you don't want to keep the capsules inside of the desiccator for longer than five days because you can actually cause the spores to lose viability if they're too dry. Another form of desiccant that you might be able to use is silica gel. And what's also interesting about these desiccants is usually they come with an indicator dye. And so you can see that this desic desiccant here, the anhydrous calcium sulfate, is colored blue. Once it has absorbed all the water that it can absorb, it will turn pink. And you can simply place the desiccant in an oven in order to dry it back out to make it um, useful for drying out spores once again. So after you have placed your spores in the desiccator for three to five days, you can take them out and place them into a very cold environment. So at the Serial Disease Laboratory, we place um, capsules inside of envelopes into cold storage freezers. So we use a minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer. Another option is to place the spores into glass tubes and immerse those glass tubes in liquid nitrogen. Either way, you're keeping the, sp the spores very cold and also very dry. And this will allow the spores to remain viable for years or even decades. 